Hoje conversei com um fundo de investimento em startup e a análise é sobre um fundo de investimento de startup na Alemanha focado em empresas de mobility. Se você gostar desse vídeo, deixe seu like. Se você tiver algum comentário, alguma pergunta, pode deixar aqui abaixo. E se você tiver alguém que você conheça que queira ouvir e queira entender um pouquinho mais sobre o assunto, basta compartilhar. Caso queira se atualizar sobre os novos vídeos e os novos posts que eu fizer no meu canal no YouTube, basta clicar no primeiro link que vai estar aqui nos comentários abaixo. Grande abraço e até a próxima! Um, um, projection, yes. There. Yeah, right. Great. There. Okay, so um, let me start with telling you a little bit about us, Motic Ventures. Um, we are a an automotive a joint venture between E and Co, and a management consulting consultancy in the automotive industry, and Venier Capital, a VC fund manager. The idea behind this is to get the best of both worlds. So we have the in-depth regulatory and financial know-how of a VC fund manager, coupled with the um, high-profile network of decision makers and executives, and the uh, in-depth industry knowledge that is part and parcel of a consultancy, management consultancy. What this allows us to do is to quickly evaluate every aspect of a startup very precisely. So we have to know how to look at the financials, the team, the business model and the product and really know what to look for and evaluate the potential in each aspect of a startup. Um, we, we use this to do early stage investments, so see, mainly seed and Series A investments. Mm -hmm. um, we invest, um, the, any investment we do is in the four, in mobility, of course, but in the four areas of electromobility, connected mobility, autonomous mobility, and mobility as a service. Um, because these are closely related to the automotive industry where Ian Co is coming from, is based. And what we are looking for in these four areas is um, the topic that connects these areas is over um, enabling technologies. That is, um, technologies that make processes more efficient, enable new business models, and basically pave way for the digitalization of mobility. Um, yeah. And we are currently built, setting up our first fund. We are looking to raise 20 million euros, with which we want to invest in 20 to 25 companies. Mm -hmm. We have, a, as you can see here, the AXF Alpha and the European Super Angels Club. We are connected to them. And the AXF Alpha is one of our strategic co-investment partnerships. So we are connected to other larger funds, which helps us to make these 20 investments and um, keep joining follow-up rounds. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we are, um, yeah, the rest is some regulation side and um, some numbers, but that's the high points, yeah. Um, right, we already have two investments. Carfellows is a German startup. They're building a, an end-to-end -end digital sales platform for cars. Mm -hmm. So you go online, 
you browse for the cars, you sign a digital contract that includes insurance, you get registration done for you, and the car is delivered to your doorsteps within two weeks. So very easy, very um, stress-free process, especially for Germany where getting a registration can be very annoying. And RFIC is an Israeli startup building a low-cost, high-resolution radar chip for autonomous cars and drones and basically anything where you want to have radar vision. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's it, basically. For Tell us. Tell me a little bit more about the people that are um, in the, well, okay. the company. Um, we have our two managing directors. That's Gesa Brugger. Um, co-founder and principal at Ian Co. And he's a long year management consultant in the automotive industry. And he's doing a lot of, I mean, I'm a junior member, so I don't know everything that my bosses do. So I can't talk too much about them. Mm -hmm. And Berthold Baurekalik is the, CEO and founder of Venunier Capital, the other half of our um, joint venture. And he's also initiator and president of the European Super Angels Club, which is the one of the largest one of the largest, if not the largest um, angels investment networks, angels investor networks in Europe. Which one? What's the name again? Um, European Super Angels Club. Ah, uh, okay. Here. Mm, I see. And I think we're um, the ASAC is, I think, somewhere around five thousand members by now. Um, and what's your role on Motec Ventures? Um, if you could myself. Yourself. Okay, so I'm Daniel. I'm working at Ian Co. and supporting at Motec Ventures. My role at Motec at the moment is um, fundraising. So I'm generating leads, talking to people, and then basically getting in, um, creating interest to invest in our fund, and. Once someone has t said, yes, I'm interested, tell me more. And then I connect them with my with our MDs to um, talk about the details more in depth about what Motec is doing, strategy, the strategy behind everything. And basically st stuff that is... Be um, that I do not, not know about because they are the bosses, not me. If I knew about it, I would, I could be the boss. I see. So, and your, your work is more related to identify investors and not companies to invest, right? At the moment, yes. Once we have invested, um, once we have closed our fund and have raised it, the money we need, I will, um, I don't know what I will be doing. I will continue to work at Motec some part-time, but as I'm also at Ian Co, we have to see. Um, one thing that will then be more important where I will quite likely be involved will be deal sourcing. So looking for startups as I am also rather well connected in the startup scene. I see. And what is the process of bringing startups for for the company or for the fund? Um, I mean, 
a lot of our deal sourcing is through the ASAC and through our ENCO network. So um, you, once they are in in their pipeline because of the relationship, uh, one company would indicate, suggest, or refer. They start not the startups, but these one are I think scale ups already for the fund. Is that right? Um, I mean sourcing. So this is our investment process. Okay. And sourcing is um, very wide, very open, basically. Our, we're using our whole network everywhere. Um, we're looking everywhere for startups throughout our whole network mm -hmm. and actively expanding our network. But that or will be actively expanding our network. But that is in the future. At the moment, we are, as I, as I said, in the process of raising money. Mm -hmm. So um, it's network-based sourcing. People we know tell us, say, hey, I found, I just stumbled across this startup. They're very cool, or I had this idea, and I have a few people willing to realize it, something like that. I see. And the due diligence is made by your team or you hire a third party to do that? Um, we do the due diligence. That is um, what I was talking before. Um, with this, with the know-how and expertise that we have, we can even we can do the due diligence ourselves. Com because we can evaluate the business model, we can evaluate the product, financials and the team we know what to look for in each of those areas okay i i have understood that my question would be if the team that will conduct the due diligence is inside the administration fee the administration um, fees of the fund or because I, if it's in the company or if those companies are still separate i didn't understand if it's a joint venture for them to create it is a fund, joint venture or if it's a merge and acquisition that they are now only one company um it's a joint venture. So okay. Ian Co and Veninier are still separate companies. Okay. We are cooperating, working together in Motec Ventures. And since Motec Ventures is um, very young mm -hmm. and still um, there is um, companies to uh, portfolio companies, which is not a lot. So at the moment, Motec is still drawing on resources from both parent companies mm -hmm. to do everything that is necessary, which will change later on. But for the moment, um, that's the way it is. And as the team that is doing the due diligence is part of um, draws from the parent companies, I would say they're in a way part of the company you would say you could say so the management fee would cover also did you you should cover the due diligence okay i'm sorry that i'm stumbling a little bit i i haven't uh, no one asked that question of me so far so i was for a moment at a loss what to say because i didn't mm, explicitly know the answer um, I knew it implicitly, but I had to construct it for myself. No problem. Sorry for that. No problem. And in order to select the companies to, to be eligible for the fund, 
the investors of the fund will have any participation on that or it's on by you by your company it's it's conducted fully by your company um do you mean if do the investors have any voting rights yes if, voting if an right if they have uh, as far as i know contribution not. or something like that as far as i know not but um I may be wrong, so that is a question that you would have to um, ask of our MDs. Okay, I see. Could you talk a little bit more about the startups that are in the pipeline? Um, yes, not do you know so them? much. Um, not so much because I'm currently not in. Um, not involved in deal sourcing. Oh, okay. So I know that we have them in our pipeline, but um, don't haven't talked to any of them. Okay. So can't say a lot. Okay. The previous direct investments that you have done, they are part of the fund already. Um, no, so will be, these were will be some example investments. And so, FRIC. Um, these are example investments done by either Ian Co or Vanier Capital before. Okay. Just um, uh, and um, part and current investment means that it will be this the companies invested by the fund already. Yes, Th these two are already portfolio companies of Motec Ventures. And it, those are part of the fund number one. Yes. And the pipeline are the possible companies that will also be part. Can possible, Can. yes. And we will, um, this is an extract so this is not everything we're looking at okay and we have a very well filled pipeline already mm -hmm. the problem is that for the moment we're short on money to invest so have we have to um, raise money to actually do further investments mm -hmm. And basically fill our fund, which is the focus at the moment. So deal sourcing is secondary at the moment. I see. So do you expect from investors to, to participate somehow or just to to invest and receive dividends or an exit how what how can you see the investors that what are you looking for are you looking um, for investors that are more participant or that the ones that they only they don't want to be involved in the business itself in the company themselves so one thing I know we are doing is for every investment we do, we give an investment opinion to our investors. Mm -hmm. um, apart from that, I don't know. Okay. Um, I'm at the moment generating leads, so people, I'm looking for people interested in investing. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not involved in the further discussions because these happen um, directly between our MDs and the people in, interested in investing. Um, so I don't I can't.
can't talk too much. I can't. I can't tell you about the level of involvement we are interested in or that is possible. Basically, you would have to talk to RMDs about that. Sorry okay. for okay. answering like that. And no I will, problem. for Let's... the future, I will talk to them about it. I will ask them. But when some, a question like that first comes up, I just don't know. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. Here. That's... Uh, you are searching... Um, this is our network where we know people and just a um, small part of the um, some of some highlights, let's say, of the places where we have where our network has nodes. I see. And do you know if there are incentives for people to help you with the startup pipeline? Um, well, okay, so what I do know is that if someone invests or invests himself or gathers um, several in investors and or gathers in a volume of a certain amount, they become a venture partner, at which point I know that if they source a startup that will that becomes part of the portfolio, they get um, um, they have some incentives. So it may be that there is also incentives for other people to source startups for MoTeC, for the fund, I just don't know, Okay. honestly. So again, something you would have to ask our MDs. Okay. Let's go to the next slide, because I see that in Brazil you don't have a relationship. Um, are, are you looking for investors that would uh, be from other countries in order to to bring diverse, diversity and other place knowledge out from Europe and US and China and Korea? Um, I mean, we are planning to do 10% um, worldwide investments. Mm -hmm. So in that way, um, having the possibility to source deals from Brazil and Southern America is definitely interesting. Um, apart from that, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's an answer that I have to give you regularly because um, you're asking very in-depth questions that I haven't had so far, so you would have to talk to our MDs. Okay. I'm really, really sorry. No problem. Just go back to the, the first slides. I see. Yes, who is this guy? Automotive this and is entrepreneur. This is Boga, our um, one of our MDs. Uh, okay. So go to um, the next slide. There, there, there was one slide that you haven't talked too much about it. Um. Yes. So, um, this is um. The slide deck is more focused on the Ian Co side. Um, so this is um, Ian Co is a, as I said, a management consultancy in the automotive sector. Okay. These are some of the companies we 
um, we supported, mm -hmm. we consult, we did consulting with. Um, oh, I see the portfolio. Yes, so and it, it demonstrates um, the experience. Exactly. That's um, Ian Co is Ian it stands Co. for Entrepreneurs and Consultants. So we are um not just consultants but also entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Um, the company is founded um f four years ago. It's completely in um so um the only um consultants at Ian Co. People working at Ian Co. can hold shares. So it's mm -hmm. um, um and from the start we had a um, venture arm and Geza is our head of ventures. Uh, okay. And these are some of the companies um we invested in or founded. Uh, For example we also have a um, um, as you can see here, we are also in South Korea, so international start international co consultancy with um, with a strong leaning toward the um, um, startup scene and entrepreneurial spirit. Mm, I see. And the next slide. Um, this is, um, okay, um, this book, your... The Incarnation Code, it's, um, it's the book of our, um, at Ian Co of our CEO, Engelbert Wimmer. Mm -hmm. It's, um, a story about how the, um, the automotive industry can, Digitalize, so move into the future and remain competitive against the digital giants coming out of Silicon Valley and China. Mm -hmm. I see. It's currently being translated into English. So, if um, once it is translated, I can um, send. I can tell you about it, and then. Um, yeah, I think we can send you a copy. Okay. And if you're interested. Hmm? And the next slide. Um, so the ecosystem. Yes, ecosystems. it's huge, huge in Europe. Do you know uh, here the source? UVC Partners. UVC is a VC company? I don't know. Okay. Okay. A lot and of let me and Google those, it. Do you or... know if those companies are in Europe? Yes, the um, European this... mobility ecosystem. Yes. Yeah, a lot of them. Yes, it, as I said, it, it, it's huge and there is a lot going on. Great. And the next slide. Um, yes, it's a saying of one of our MDs and it's very fitting to what is happening right now. Nice. And the next one is your focus, right? Yes. Just paving the way for manufacturers are digital champions in Europe. In the US we have 11% in Asia 19%. Yes. Yeah, there's an opportunity here. Yes, and we are working hard on making it that a reality and pushing the digitization of our industry here in Europe. Mm -hmm. So, good. Um, I just looked up the um, this source UVC Partners. Mm -hmm. So, 
Yes, it is a venture capital firm. It's the um, VC fund attached to the um, university here in Munich, the technical university. I see. Good. And the next one yes. is the four pillars that you mentioned, right? Yes, the four areas. Yeah. I mean, mobility is a huge field and it's difficult to cover everything and know about everything, even in mobility. Mm -hmm. So we focus on these areas because these are closely related to the automotive industry, automotive mobility. And that is what we know, where we have the industry know-how and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good to have a focus, especially when you have experts in the team, which it seems that you have. Yes. And you have talked about the joint venture, and the next slide, the team that you have explained a little bit. Um, so th this is our management direct managing directors mm -hmm. and two advisors. Um, yeah, Dr. Wolfgang Ziebert, he is an a mobility industry veteran, as you can see, and he knows about mobility and he knows a lot about it, worked it his whole life there and I, I have to say I can't t tell any more about him because I personally haven't met him yet. Oh, no problem. I joined Ian Co after Motec was founded and yeah. No problem, no problem. And the same with Henrik Fisker. I mean, Fisker, maybe you know about the car brand Fisker? No. Um, it's a luxury car brand and that's his family. Oh, or I see. he himself founded it, I think. Either he or his father, I, I don't know. But also... Uh, automotive expert. I see. Okay, and the next one is the one that you have explained. Yes. It's the history of um, the Ian Co venture arm even before Ian Co was founded because the core team of Ian Co. They've been, they've worked together for a long time, and I think they even found the previous consultancy where they were before together. So they, um, the they know consulting work and they know entrepreneurial work very well. Okay. That's clear. And here? Just um, some examples that we really have a um, high, high caliber network and know what we are talking about. Because FD Tech is one of our port, one of the portfolio companies at Ian Co. Oh, okay. So it's mentioning that they are on news. Um, well, what this, these two articles are um, saying that um, VW, Volkswagen, invested in FD Tech after we found them and we actually got FD Tech in contact with VW. Mm -hmm. I see. Good. And here's the process. Yes. 
and then the fun vehicle in the tails that you have said the other thing that's written here it's term fund with three years investment period and eight years 10 years max life cycle um so this is um very standard for um any fund so up to five years we will be investing mm -hmm. and after that we hold the portfolio companies and um, join future rounds investment rounds at, at our portfolio companies but not adding any po more portfolio companies and after 10 years so um, in 2029 we will and the life cycle of the first fund comes to an end we will um, exit from the, the startups where we invested in previously mm -hmm. um, divest the shares and return the money to our share investors mm -hmm. Do you know about the dividends? So, um, we are expecting a, our, our performance goal is a 2.5 multiple. So, um, after the, this 10 years, the fund, our goal is to grow the fund by two and a half, by a factor of two and a half. Okay. So for any euro you invest, you get two and a half euros back, roughly. Mm -hmm. Minus some years, fees. But... Maximum. Hmm? In 10 years. That is our goal, yes. And there is a performance fee of 20%. Um, so this is a little bit more complex. So you have a hurdle rate of 6%. That means that 6% per year compound interest is without any fee. 6% compound interest over 10 years comes to 80%. So um, the, a mul multiple of um, 1.8 is completely without fees. So Let's say the fund doubles. You get your initial investment back plus 80% without any fees and the remaining 20%, we will get 20% performance fee, which is 4% of the total. Um, would, uh, so you would get 1.96 multi um, multiple of your inv initial investment back. If we reach our performance goal of a uh, multiple of two and a half, we would get 20% of um, 70%, which is 14%. So we, we would get a fee of 14% and you would get a multiple of 2.36 on your in initial investment back. I see. I see. And the minimum contribution is a hundred. Hundred thousand, yes. Yeah. I see. The idea is very good. It's good that there is a focus. Um, however, the minimum contribution is above my possibilities. Okay. But I'm I'm interested in knowing better your company entering more details. If you need anything from Brazil, if I could uh, participate somehow, helping you guys with mobile companies here coming up in Brazil. I'm not sure that you you are aware of, but I have talked with more than a hundred startups all over the world already, 
more than 15 countries in four continents so maybe it would be a, a possibility for us to to figuring something out for working together yes and well one thing that could also be possible if you know other investors that you um um put together a uh, uh, that you join together to reach the hundred thousand would be possible also uh, okay if you're interested in um investing it as as you say you are it's an interesting concept for you so just an just an idea for you uh, okay good to know so I could enter, I could join some people, few people, and we can together invest a hundred. Yes. So one person would sign as the nominal investor mm -hmm. and you would have to, any agreement that you would have is on your side, basically. But the other ones would have to sign a document as well, even if um, they are not the main investor. Not with Motec. Ah, okay, with me. That would be your on your side. Ah, so I would have to create my own fund to invest in your fund. Um, or just have an agreement that you share that this person put in so and this and this amount and everything. So basically a co-investment agreement where you take the lead and they follow you. Yeah, I'm not sure how it works here in Brazil related to the taxes and the legal obligation about it. I don't know. It's a possibility, but if it's not feasible for you, that's the way it is. Yeah. I would think about it. Okay. So, so. going forward, what we can do is I will try to figure out a way of doing it with other investors here how it works yes. and how things go and then mm -hmm. in parallel you could provide my linkedin profile for the managing directors for them to to see if it would be a good idea to have another uh, another call to me to explain more details and for us to figure out a way of working together if it's possible and if it's good for both sides for both both sides um well if you could reach the point where you say okay i'm i have people interested in investing and we are above this threshold of 100,000, then I, I will hand you over to our MDs. Um, before that, there is um, not much to talk about um, on the investment side. Once we start deal sourcing, I will come back to you and then hand you over specifically for that. Tell them, okay, I'm, I talked to this guy from Brazil and he knows a lot of startups. He's very well connected worldwide. And then we go specifically into that. But that will be once we've closed this, the fund um, sometime next year. Before that, we, um, because there's so much to do in both Ian Co and Venionaire Capital, that there is 
um, we don't have the resources to actually work on further deals. Now oh, I see. Okay. Because we already have our deal pipeline pretty much filled. Okay. No problem. So Daniel, it was very good to talk to you. Thank you for introducing me to the fund. Thank you for your time and have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Goodbye.